are two very public NFL plays this Sunday, week one of the regular season. I agree with one of them. I disagree with the other. I'm going to let you know which one to play and which one to fade. The two most public plays along with four bonus games, six games analyzed, the six most public selections for week one NFL coming up with analysis in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And as I'll do every week of the NFL, I'm giving you the most public plays, the most consensus selections in the NFL. And here's the premise. We look to fade them normally. Fading the public works long-term because we get adjusted line value. We go a contrarian, and it is a profitable strategy. But we have to pick our spots. We don't just blindly fade the public. We pick our spots. And in week one, we have to tread a little bit lightly because this consensus data is a little bit weaker in week one because the lines have been up all summer. A lot of sharp money has been bet in. The public's starting to come in now as well. But there are two games that stood out as very public here in week one. I'm going to give those to you here with some analysis let you know where I agree and disagree, and then also four bonus games on the way out, including your Sunday night football game on national TV. First, let's look at by far the most public play here in week one, and that is the Cincinnati Bengals minus seven and a half at home, one o'clock Eastern Sunday against the New England Patriots. And it's not necessarily a play on Cincinnati, and we'll talk about this a lot throughout the season. Sometimes the most public plays is just a fate of the other team, and I think We're going to see a lot of public plays against New England this season, unless they surprise early on. Patriots are projected to maybe be the worst team in the NFL, probably only going to get to four to five wins if they're lucky, and they are a horrendous offensive team, a lot of offensive issues, quarterback issues. They're just not going to score much, but the Patriots were a good defensive dog at times last season, and that did keep them in some games, and I would actually lean towards New England at plus seven and a half or more, so this is a situation where I would look to fade the public. Um, Always risky backing a bad team like the Patriots, but they have first-year coach Gerard Mayo here. Could get a little bit of a spark after winning just four games last year, and they only scored 14 points a game. As I mentioned, the offense was really challenged at times, but remember last year, mid-season, they had that four-game span in early November in which they allowed uh, 20 points or less. In fact, 10 points or less over a four-week span. They had a buy in between. They gave up 10 by 10 and 6, and they went 0-3. Not only 0-3 straight up, but they went 0-3 against the spread. They gave up 10 points or less in three straight games and still lost all three against the spread and straight up. That's how bad the offense was, but the defense was really good at times. We'll take a flyer with them as a dog here, plus 7.5 or more. It's a very key number, about a 5% chance mathematically Cincinnati wins by exactly 7. So here's an example of the consensus, the public one-sidedness, pushing this line a little higher than it should be. And we're getting that hook, that extra half point because of it. At 7.5 or more, I would look to fade the public with the Patriots. And once again, Cincinnati, the most public side here in Week 1. Now, the other public play, the second most public play here in Week 1, is the Miami Dolphins minus the 3 to 3.5 at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And in this one, I actually like Miami. I would agree with the public consensus on this one. Now, the line is 3 in some spots, but being a public play has pushed it higher to 3.5 in others. Perfect uh, textbook example if you're the importance of having multiple sportsbook accounts so that you can shop around for the best number. You know, I mentioned seven being a key number, about a 5% chance a game lands on seven for the favorite. Well, there's about a 9 to 10% chance Miami wins this game by exactly three. It's the most critical number in football betting. And here's an example where some books have minus three, others have three and a half. Um, at minus three or less, the Dolphins are the play in this game. Even though it's a public play, I think Miami is still the correct side here, and I would actually not look to fade the public in this game. Like I said, the public's not always wrong, right? We pick our spots, we and we look for situational analysis to back it up. Um, Jacksonville is a team that could be decent this year. Um, obviously, um, they've got the quarterback and Trevor Lawrence to win games. Uh, after going 1-15 and 3-14, and, three and 14, they really turned things around instantly in Doug Peterson's first season, going 10-9 and and then 9-8 and last year. So they've basically been a 500 team, slightly better, entering Peterson's third year now. But I think Miami's the better team overall, and we're getting them at three or less. There is value in Mike McDaniel's third season at the helm as well for Miami. A solid 11-win season last year, and this is a team that's definitely got a lot of upside. They finished cold last year, losing their last uh, three games straight up in ATS, including the playoff loss against the eventual Super Bowl champs. But I think they've learned from it. I think they could be improved this year. And I would actually not look to fade the Dolphins, even though they're the second most public play here in Week 1. All right, those are your two most public plays for Week 1. Bengals minus 7.5, Dolphins minus the 3 to 3.5. Nothing else was quite strong to be an official public play, but I want to give you four other games that just missed the cut. These are some additional public leans. Before I get to those, though, a quick reminder, if you want my personal best bets, 
for Saturday College Football, NFL Sunday, Major League Baseball every day. Check out on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. I know we're talking football, but don't sleep on baseball. As I record this video on Friday, a 22-6 and baseball run the past few weeks. That's right, 22-6 and baseball winning run. I average maybe one baseball play a day in September, and it's a strong one, as evident by that 22-6 and run in August into September here. College football, pro football, always cashing big. We started the NFL off right Thursday night with the best bet winner for my clients, and it should be no surprise. In fact, the last two years combined, the last two seasons combined, nobody has won more units, won ATS profits in college and pro football combined at wagertalk.com than I have. And then you cap off that 22-6 and baseball current streak. Not a bad reason to get an all-sports, all-access subscription. Now, if you're ready to take the plunge and be a serious investor and play consistently every day, the best package is the one-year all-access. And it gets even better with an $800 discount. And that's what you get with promo code SM365. Works out to less than $3 a day, less than a dollar and a half per play for every college football, pro football, Major League Baseball, and college and pro basketball, which starts in a couple months for the next 365 days and nights. Go to my page, select the one-year all-access pass, but be sure to use promo code SM365 at checkout for an instant $800 discount. By the way, that promo code is listed on my homepage right now, so you don't have to memorize it. If you want a smaller package, though, if you're new, if you want to try out the weekend, three-day sampler for just $49. It's normally $69. It's just $49 this weekend, three days and nights of all sports. That's college football, pro football, and that red-hot baseball that's on a 22-6 and six winning run. For just $49. No promo code needed on that one, but you got to go down below the best bets in the free play. If you go to the normal drop down, it's 69, but on the main page below my best bets in the daily free play, you'll see the three day sampler for just 49. Check that out if you want to try it out this weekend or if you want that one year all access. Promo code SM365 gets it done. Hey, speaking of free plays, I do post a free football or baseball play every day on my page. Games that just missed the cut just a bit outside, and those free plays are strong because I average maybe. One to two best bets during the week, three to four college plays, three to four NFL plays on a Sunday. So those last cuts are pretty strong still, and they do win long term. So check out the bonus free plays, but don't miss out on those strong best bets this weekend. Right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's get to some bonus public leans for you. Once again, I gave you the two public plays this week, Cincinnati and Miami, but there's some additional public leans out there. We'll start with the New Orleans Saints minus four. And once again, I think this is more of a fade of the Carolina Panthers, which is not a surprise because Carolina was atrocious last year. You know, we talked about the Patriots maybe being the worst team in the league this year. Well, Carolina was the worst team uh, last year, and they were really the second to worst team the year before. You know, it's interesting. Carolina had the second worst record two years ago because they won the season finale. Otherwise, they would have had the number one pick and gotten C.J. Stroud instead of the Texans. Instead, they get the two pick. They get Bryce Young. He did not look good last year, and he's on a short lease this year. They've already said if he doesn't perform, they'll make the change. Um, but I think the Carolina Panthers are actually going to be better this year than expected, which isn't saying much because this is a team that was atrocious once again last year going 2-15. and 15. But new head coach, Second year for the quarterback, and they also did finish decent down the stretch. In fact, over their last five games, they maybe only won one of them, but guess who that was against? The Atlanta Falcons, a divisional opponent. The week before that, yes, they lost to the Saints 28-6, but it was a little misleading. They actually outgained the Saints in total yardage. In fact, three of their final five games of the regular season, the Panthers had the yardage edge, and they only had the yardage edge in two of the first 12 games. 2-10 2-10 and 10 against the stats the first 12, 3-2 the last 5. So I do think they were starting to turn the things around a little bit at the end of the season. I project the Saints to be probably a 500 team, maybe slightly better. I do think Carolina can hang in this game, so I would look to fade the public with the Carolina Panthers. Once again, the Saints, an additional public lean, minus the 4-4.5. Four to four and a half. I would disagree with that one. I think the Panthers would be the play in that game. Uh, another public lean, the Houston Texans at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. I mentioned the Texans had that huge breakout season last year after being the worst team in the league two years ago. They broke out last year with 11 wins. C.J. Stroud was a fantastic rookie quarterback, rookie head coach. Everything went right. I'd be careful with the Texans this year. They're a loaded offense, no question about it. But when you have that much of a turnaround in one season, I'm just such a contrarian at heart when it comes to the NFL And it's just funny to me that the Texans were one of the teams, kind of like the Panthers and Patriots have been recently, that the public just faded year in and year out. And why not? They went 4-12 in 2020, 4-13 the year after, 3-13-1 two years ago, 
And then after having the number one pick, they go 11-8. and eight. I definitely could see some regression this year. And now all of a sudden, the public is back in Houston. Um, I think the Colts, Anthony Richardson, a lot of unknown there. He only played four games last year, but he looked good when he did play. There's a lot of upside with the Colts. And by the way, my friend and colleague, Ralph Michaels at wagertalk.com, the stat daddy, human database, father of Jeff, the pen. He points out on a lot of shows and on Twitter the past few weeks that divisional dogs do quite well in week one. And the sweet spot, home divisional dogs. And guess what? There's one home divisional dog this week, and that just happens to be the Indianapolis Colts. So this is another situation where I would look to fade the public. Uh, public leaning towards the Texans. I like the Colts plus the two and a half. But wait, see if you can maybe get a plus three. Such a key number by Sunday is the Texans are a public a lean public play. So I think that line could hit three in some spots. Take a look at the Colts, especially at plus three if you find that number on Sunday. All right, let's close it out with one more for you. The Sunday night game, uh, public sentiment on the Lions in this one. I'd call this an additional public lean on the Lions, minus the four to four and a half. Uh, keep in mind, the Rams last year lost the playoff game at Detroit, so this is quick turnaround playoff revenge. And it's one thing to say you got revenge. It's another thing if you can do anything about it. Well, I think they actually could. That was a very close loss last year for the Rams, 24-23 to win by the Lions. Uh, but the Rams had almost a 90-yard total edge in offensive yards versus defensive yards. They had almost a 90-yard total yard edge in that game. Um, there were no turnovers by either, either team. It was a very evenly matched ball game. So now to get you know the four to four and a half points is a little strange because the Rams were only a three-point road dog in the playoff game and lost by one. So I do think this being the Sunday night game, the Lions having some public sentiment, this is an example where the public has pushed the line a little higher than it should be. Also keep in mind in this game uh, that the Lions though, are one of the best, if not the best point spread teams in the league the past few seasons. So you got to be careful with that. They've been money in the bank. In fact, uh, this is now the fourth year for Dan Campbell. Uh, after taking over a 5-11 and team, he went just 3-13 and won his first season, but he went 11-6 and against the spread. Year after that, 9-8 and straight up, 12-4-1 and against the spread. Last year, 14-6 and straight up and against the spread. So even though Detroit's become a public team, they continued to crush it from a point spread perspective. Dan Campbell now 37-16 and against the number. So if you're fading the public here, you're fading the 37-16 and point spread record his first three years in Detroit. One other game just missed the cut. You know, those are three additional leans, once again, a public sentiment, public leans on the Saints, Texans, and Lions Sunday night. One other game that had a little bit of public sentiment, I did a full standalone video on this one, is on the Buffalo Bills, minus six and a half. Uh, once again, Cardinals at Bills. If you'd like my full breakdown of that game, there's a five-minute standalone video here on Wager Talk TV. Um, I would lean towards the Cardinals if the line hits seven or more in that game, as the public is leaning a little bit towards the Bills, so we might see some sevens by Sunday. Once again, if you want a full deep dive of that game, also a deep dive of Chargers Raiders. I did Falcons Steelers. So many games I can't keep track anymore. All the games I did here on Wager Talk TV for week one NFL action. Uh, Titans and Bears. All those standalone videos here. I broke down six games for you here. Five and a half. Go get the rest of that Bills Cardinals breakdown. Plus three other games solo videos. Yet another reason to click subscribe and hit the bell as well as I broke down over half the NFL card for free for you this week here on Wager Talk TV. Also standalone college football videos, free baseball plays throughout the week. Click subscribe, click the bell for instant alerts. Thumbs up, like the video on the way out, always appreciated. And most importantly, comment below. You all know I read the comments, I reply back. Hey, look, this is, I think, maybe the fourth, I've lost count, the fourth year we've done Fade the Public here. You know I love the feedback. I love the hundreds of comments that come in. I try to keep up the best I can. Challenge me. Overwhelm me with so many comments this week that I can't keep up because I do try to reply back to every one of them. Let me know your thoughts. Where do you agree or disagree with the public here in week one? What NFL best bets do you like? Hey, if you have some extra time, throw some analysis in. Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. So comment below. I read them all and I reply back. And don't forget, if you want my official best bets for this Sunday, NFL, Saturday college football, daily baseball best bets, which are on a 26, 22 and 6 run as we speak, then check out that three-day all-sports special because it's this weekend only for just $49. No promo code needed. Steve Merrill wagertalk.com and while you're there check out the daily free play as well steve merrill wagertalk.com get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm hey follow me on x on twitter at steve merrill two r's one l at steve merrill on x and instagram and stay tuned right here to wager talk tv for some more great free betting content coming up next